Okay, commissioners, if you'd like to take your seats, I'd like to call to order the Public Services Committee to order. First item is Pledge of Allegiance. Joe? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I felt supported by Kraft. Please vote to adopt the agenda. Motion passes. We need a motion to approve the minutes. Moved by Joelette, supported by Hall. What's wrong? Everything okay? Okay, so uh, we're ready to vote on the minutes, Mike. Please vote on the minutes. That passes. Public participation. Anyone from the public? Okay. Anyone from the public? Seeing no one from the public, we'll go on to department recommendations. Looks like we have two items with uh, Vicki Rad. Uh, first one is a budget adjustment, planning and economic development grant funds, 361, uh, through SEMCOG, uh, North Branch Greenway grant, $32,740. Vicki, hello. Welcome. Hello. Is this on? Yeah, it is on. Great. Um, yeah, so in front of you, we have two grants that we received. I'll go over the SEMCAG one, and if there's any questions with that one, and then we can go on to the second one. The SEMCAG one is a North Branch Greenway Partnership uh, for the 32740. It is a floodplain greenway as well as trail planning. We look at those communities that touch that North Branch and aligning that with our Parks and Natural Resources Master Plan. Uh, this project actually aligns very nicely with that. Um, the North Branch is an asset to Macomb County, so we're looking at really creative ways working with our communities on how we can utilize that, that land against the, the waterway, so that's part of this project. Uh, one of the really cool things that's going to come out of this actually is a, a floodplain model. Um, that's something that we don't currently have, something that our communities are embracing. Uh, this grant um, is a, a partnership. There's several partners that are involved with it. Uh, we've got um, the Clinton River Watershed Council, HCMA, Six Rivers, and then some of our communities include Clinton Township, Macomb Township, Ray, and Lenox. Wonderful. Okay, uh, can we first get a motion for this, please? Moved by Gillette, supported by Carabelli. Any questions at all on this for Vicki? Leon? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, when you say utilize the floodplain a little bit more, uh, I know we have some county properties that are along the North Branch, you know, close to Hall Road there, south on Hall Road. Uh, and um, uh, are we talking about recreational use or just environmental enhancement, um, both? Both. Um, when we look at that waterway, um, and there are some properties that are owned by the various units, whether they're county or township or city owned. And so all that will come into um, perspective we look at the assets around the floodplain. Okay, and so we're we talking like trails? Perhaps, yes. That's one of the things that we're looking at. Um, potentially it could be trails. Some of it could be looking at um, various you know, rights to the waterway, which could be hiking or something other creative uses for that, those trails. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Leon. Uh, any other questions on this item? Uh, seeing none, please vote. We do have a motion, so please vote. Hmm. Item passes. Uh, next item is, uh, let's see here, a grant fund for uh, Michigan Economic Development Corporation to defense grant number four, $119,000. Vicki. Uh, so this one is uh, a little near and dear to my heart um, since I've been with Macomb County, been working really closely with our partners at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Um, they've got an office there, the Michigan Defense Center, who we work in great partnership with. Um, year after year, they do give us grants to help support some of our strategic efforts in protecting and growing the defense industry. Uh, so what's presented in front of you today is a grant for $119,000. Uh, there's various projects that fall within this grant. Uh, one being the Salford Sustainability Study. Uh, they are coming in as a partner with some local match to support that study. 
Uh, we've got the air show coming up in 2020. Uh, we're looking at doing some partnership there to really have a nice display um, and bringing some of our business communities and business attraction <coughs> efforts during that event. Uh, we've got the um, AUSA, which I just actually came back from D.C. yesterday. That is a, a big show for us, uh, showing for us. We've got a lot of our defense contractors that go to D.C. Uh, really, there's a lot of contracts and handshakes that happen during that conference. And what we walk away with is business attraction and business retention prospects. And so we look to do that again next year with our partners. Uh, we've got our international landing zone. That's actually a really neat program when we're talking to these international companies uh, for example, at AUSA, we met with an Australian delegation, an Australian delegation, um, Israel, uh, Germany, talking to them about why they would want to have a footprint here in Macomb County. And so this ILZ program provides that soft landing zone for them. And so that is help funded through this grant. Uh, we also have MADCAT. And this is actually a pretty successful program that was originated here in our office. This is the Michigan Automotive and Defense Cyber Awareness Team. That particular project really has been focused on workforce development, really enhancing um, the high schools, getting them involved with cybersecurity programming. Uh, today we have 14 high schools now in Macomb County that do provide cybersecurity as an elective, knowing that we're seeing a lot more job creation happening in the space. And when we talk about prosperity and um, economic vitality, these cybersecurity jobs are high wage paying um, and, and high demand. And so we want build that ecosystem starting with our school districts. And this robotics collaborative, um, this is something that's been an ongoing project. Uh, so this is a continuation of the grant from 2019, uh, where it is standing up a, a nonprofit, oh, nonpro yes. um, nonprofit organization with partners with MISD, yeah. Sterling Heights, and Macomb Community College, really focusing I on mean. that workforce and fueling the talent pipeline. And so there's some programming dollars that fall within this grant to help get that kicked off, there you go. which is phenomenal. And then we've got some additional funds in here wow. for supply chain matchmaking. Uh, when we look at what's happening with automotive, potentially looking at the slowdown, not necessarily the recession that we saw back in 08, but really having the opportunity to talk to our businesses on how to diversify, whether it be um, supporting some other industries in aerospace, robotics, automation, IT, defense. And the last bit is program coordination. Uh, this is something that we've asked for from the Defense Center as we are running through these projects to be able to uh, reap some of the benefits of our resources. And so there's some programming dollars for us in this grant. Okay, very good. Uh, can I get a motion before I open it up for speakers? Uh, moved by Leonetti, supported by Romano. And uh, Commissioner Romano, you're first on the speaker list. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Hi. So I, I'm looking here, this is with the grants, to continue the promotion and expansion of defense industry activity in Macomb County. And I just heard you mention the fact that you've gone um, out of the country to possibly attract uh, vendors to come into the, uh, uh, to Macomb County for the defense industry. But give me the basics. I mean, I, I, I see the whole picture, mm -hmm. but what do you actually do? I mean, do, do we fly out there? Do we invite them in? Do we pay for them? Uh, well, what, do they, what do they have to offer us? that we already don't have in the defense industry. Right, so on the international front, we have a lot of, they're called foreign military funds, where, for example, in Israel, in order for them to draw down on their foreign military aid, they have to have a U.S. partner. And so those conversations, I actually flew out to Israel last year, met with about 13 Israel companies about coming to the United States and building that footprint in the U.S., and then why Macomb County becomes the conversation. Um, it's really unique because of our assets with the ground vehicles uh, in the Army uh, and then Selfridge with the Air Force. So those two are really strong for us to say, why Macomb County, as we're talking to these businesses. Once there's that interest and that business says, you know, I'm interested in that footprint, they can utilize the services of the landing zone to at least have a sales office, which actually kicks off part of their uh, U.S. creation of a U.S. entity in the United States. Uh, typically, at this point, they'll work with a lawyer to figure out the legality of what that, that corporation looks like. But once they start receiving contracts, this is where we ramp up, help with the workforce, help find them a building, you know, facility, and then supply chain. Like one of our, our greatest successes, uh, it took four years to get there, was SAPA, which is a Spanish-based company. 
they have a transmission that they're selling to the Army. And they started off with four engineers in the landing zone, uh, and now they um, have a facility in Shelby Township, a really beautiful facility, uh, where they'll be doing some testing and research. And so that is, you know, a true success to how the program works. Well, as long as we get grants, everybody knows how I feel about those. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Smith. Thank you, Vicki. I don't have any questions on this, but I, I, what we just spoke about, are you ready to, after this vote, can you speak to it just for a minute and then Absolutely. we'll talk? Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. So stick around for a minute. You got it. Any other questions for Vicki on this item before we vote? Okay, seeing none, please vote. Item passes, and then I'll just open up to Bob here. Thank you. Some questions yeah. here for Vicki. Ms. Vicki uh, mentioned that she might be asking for a bypass, and I figure since we're all here and she's here uh, on this issue, maybe you could explain to everybody so it's yeah. under, everybody understands when we do it what, what we were talking about. Right, um, and I also love grants, so we've got another grant coming to us. Um, this is coming from the Office of Economic Adjustment, which is an agency of the DOD. Uh, what it is to do is to perform a selfridge sustainability study uh, that's looking at compatible land use uh, with selfridge in nine of our neighboring communities. Uh, this grant process has probably taken about six months uh, to get to this point, but we did receive the award. Uh, we pulled together a joint evaluation committee, which included members of the community, um, to evaluate two proposals that we received. Uh, we're looking at uh, in total about 290000 but not all of that will go towards the consultant. There are some additional um, items that we've budgeted within that grant for our, our support and our resources. Uh, so we have one uh, that we've selected. The Joint Evaluation Committee did review both proposals. We brought in both of the candidates for interviews. Uh, we ended up selecting one, and so we'd like to move forward. Um, and I bring this up because we wanted to get this kicked off October 1. Um, unfortunately, we had to go to that second phase of interviews, so now we're looking at being behind one month. And we don't want to be behind on schedule with DOD. Um, and so if we can get that perhaps in front of you for a vote, that would be phenomenal. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead, uh, Liam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe this issue about the self-sustainability study has come before us previously, and this is just it's moving forward. I believe we, it was a resolution at one point to support that grant. But the question I have at the time is, don't we already know Selfridge is sustainable? I mean, it's been there for a it long is, time. Right. So it's, it's, it's more than just Selfridge. So what we're looking at when we talk about planning, um, you know, Selfridge has been around for 100 years. You know, back then, population of Macomb County was 33,000. You were now 871,000 strong. And people have moved in. We've developed around Selfridge, but you know, how are our communities working alongside with Selfridge to make sure that current and future missions remain intact? And so it is really looking at um, not just the land, the sea, the air, environmental issues as well. And so part of that is coming up with recommendations on how do we move forward cohesively uh, with all of our communities on, in tow, and then what does future missions look like? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I would think that one of the reasons, too, would be we're looking for the uh, F-35s, and we had a little, I mean, we didn't make it the first time, and part of this study, I would imagine, would have to do with what could we do better, what could our surrounding communities, uh, you know, do to help bring that mission to actually make sure that Selfridge is around for the next 200 years, right, yeah. those type of... Yeah. Just a, a quick comment, if I may. My, the concerns I've heard about this is that some people are concerned the study is a... Selfridge Uberalis, and that all of their development must be curtailed in order to maintain, you know, Selfridge's mission. And there's so some, I've heard from some communities that are concerned that it would be uh, restricting their ability to grow in an effort to put Selfridge before everybody else. So that's, I'm just reiterating what I've heard from a few local electeds and, you know, you know it's brought to my attention. Le Leanna, I've heard the same thing, and I'm not necessarily advocating for, you know, for anything I'm just telling you one of the reasons that that you know is that we do want to have Selfridge around and everybody needs to kind of be a part of the game and that's why I believe you guys have had businesses and politicians and citizens all as a part of this to kind of try to make the best of both worlds meet and, right. and work together. We call it the win-win-win so it's like the win for Selfridge, the win for the communities and the win for Macomb County. It's having those conversations um, and there will be some uh, conflict resolution that does come out of this 
because currently right now there is no stated plan, master plan, for how Selfridge develops in the neighboring communities around Selfridge. And it's just been happening cohesively. However, when we look at future growth, those conversations need to be had. So that's part of the study. Um, I think you'll find with the consultants that we brought on board, they've got a lot of experience representing both the community and um, the private sector. And so having you know, that level of expertise at the table will help us get there. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming today, Vicki. We'll go on to uh, items C, D, and E, which is uh, Department of Roads. Item C is a motion to approve the contract with Motor City Electric uh, for the cost of $77,767. Funding is available in the Roads budget, capital budget. Brian? Yes, good afternoon, Commissioners. Hi. Seeking approval to uh, uh, for a contract for Motor City Electric Technologies for surveillance system and access control for our vehicle maintenance facility. Uh, this budgeting is within uh, $11.5 million previously approved for this facility and looking, like I said, for approval for this contract with this particular vendor. Okay, can I get a motion for this, commissioners? Moved by Hall, sort of ported by Sauger Lee. And are you first in the speaker list here or no? That was from the previous. That was from the previous, okay. I'm having problems here, but okay. Who wants to? Uh, which uh, speakers <laughs> first, please? <coughs> no. Any anybody wishing to speak? Okay, seeing none, we'll take a vote. <coughs> <coughs> uh, I don't know. It's okay. No. Okay, motion. Motion passes. Item number D, we have to re rescind a bo uh, board action from August 15th because we twice approved these uh, with these cost uh, sharing agreements. Uh, anything to add on this, Brian, at all? <clears throat> um, I know we brought the uh, uh, initial one, which is this one. Uh, we had to change the uh, cost share agreement as we anticipated one amount of money as far as federal funding for this particular project. In reality, we actually got more federal funding, so we had to adjust the cost share agreement with the community, and it was above the, I believe, the 5% threshold um, differential. So brought another one back. So we'd like to rescind this previous board action. Okay, uh, got a motion by Romano, supported by uh, Smith. Any questions? Seeing none, please vote. There we go, it works now. Item passes, and then the last item for Brian is uh, the bypass item, real estate purchase agreement, Partridge Creek Holding Company, uh, Romeo Plank Road, parcels $356,000. Brian? Yes, uh, this was previously brought uh, in front of the board. It was a bypassed item. Uh, we were in um, basically um, negotiations or kind of a, a, a bidding um, between two different entities. One was a local um, property that was adjacent to the parcel and one was uh, uh, a developer within the area uh, in that location. And I, th I believe we put the property up for $215,000 on the market and it uh, obviously got to a value of 356,000. So um, when win for the county and, and Department of Roads to be able to put that towards fixing more of our uh, deficient roadways. Okay, can we get a motion for this, please? Moved by Gillette, supported by Romano. Uh, speakers, I have Commissioner Romano on the list. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Brian. Brian, could we, uh, this is excess property that the Road Commission has. Is there possible we can get a list of the excess property that we have, or that you have, I should say? I don't need anything immediately, but maybe you put something together. I'd like to know what else we own. Yes, I can surely do that. Thank um, you, sir. We have some parcels that... Um, we're looking at currently, as far as moving forward, some are properties that are per se buildable um, in, in a value to the open market. Um, some parcels that we have are bits and pieces that aren't really buildable, but might be of value to adjacent property owners at a reduced value. So, yes, but I can when get you a chance, listing. please. Sure Thank can. you. You're welcome. Wonderful. Seeing no other speakers, I didn't have you on the list, but go ahead, Harold. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Let's go. You originally said, Brian, this was appraised at two hundred and fifty thousand or two fifty. The actual appraisal uh, was based off of one hundred ninety-five thousand. We 
put the property up for sale at 215. I'm slowing it in. And you got 356? That is correct. That was a bidding war between? An adjacent property owner and the, 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 the company, um, I believe it's Machery Builders, um, was the other, per se, bidder um, along this um, property here. So. so this money goes back into your budget? Is that how this works? That is correct. Yes. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Thank yes, you it was okay. a nice. Uh, Wait, your budget or <coughs> the road budget? Well, <laughs> the Department of Roads budget, yes. Not my budget. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for Brian? See none, please vote. Brian, thank you very much for coming here today, okay? Thank you, Commissioners. <clears throat> okay, uh, correspondences. I need a motion uh, 7A through 7F, moved by Hoff, supported by Sauger. I do have a question, and through my chair, if, if I can ask uh, maybe uh, Phil, for Commissioner Kraft, this, because I know you're in Lansing a lot. This is just pertaining to the item A, the but. Oh, he's not here. I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> no, see he's that. Here. He's talking to Brian. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil, he's asking, he has a question for you. Lansing question. Okay, so yeah, and this is a question to the whole anybody here in the board or our staff, um, and that's the correspondence of uh, the bipartisan House Bill 4963. Uh, I guess that was introduced in the Transportation Committee in September, um, and then there's been some PR in the news on that. Some people for it, some people are against it. State Rep. Jeff uh, Yarush Yarak talked about that and that's basically to allow counties to county commissioners to put up a ballot proposal to increase gas taxes for roads i'd love to have input from this board or specifically people who have knowledge of of lansing uh what's what's been going on with that and obviously it seems like people are talking about this now because the governor's plan is not going through and is this the next option phil if you don't mind me asking you sure thank you mr chair yeah. uh just pulling up handy dandy legislature.mi.gov uh looks like that bill was introduced uh september 12th and it's sitting in transportation committee um and that's as far as it's gotten so far so i don't really have uh, any updates i don't have a feeling of what's going on up there with that it's probably just because it's sitting there and right that's now. bipartisan so it has sponsors by democrats and republicans uh it has I don't see yet Rep Yarick on here. You said 4963? Yeah. Well, he was on TV, too, with this. I'm, I'm looking here at our... Uh, uh, there's Reps O'Malley, Lloyd Heuser, Mueller, Sneller, Miller, Shepard, and Affendulis, which are Republicans. I think Sneller's a, the only Democrat on that list. Okay. Yes. So, my, so I guess my, slightly bipartisan. Right. So I guess what I'm just saying is depending on what happens on Lansing, that gives counties potentially another tool if they wish to go that route. That's all I'm not saying I'm for or against it, but just FY information. Veronica, do you have something to add on this as president of MAC at all? No. no? Okay. Leon, just a please. Quick, just a quick note. I think we, as a county, already have the opportunity to, put, to do local road funding, but it would be through a property tax. So I guess this bill would al allow us to do it through, or a county to do it through a gas tax as well, if it were to become law. Which would be a county-wide gas tax, like a property mill. You know, each city does their own thing, Sterling Heights and Warren, they do their own thing. Right, right, right. Gas but, tax is the whole county. So, But we already have, as, the, uh, as a county, the ability to do a road tax, but it would be a property tax. This right. Would, uh, this would expand that to a gas tax. So I'm not sure it's going to change the equation those counties that haven't been willing or interested in to put forward as a property tax may also be hesitant to put it forward as a gas tax, or maybe they will be. I just, you know, I'm just curious it would have any, what kind of effect it would have. Interesting. Um, any other questions or comments on correspondences? I appreciate the comments uh, by the commissioners. Okay, seeing none, please vote. And item number eight, yeah, there we go. I don't I don't think that we're gonna have any problems passing that okay sorry uh, there Bob new business any new business commissioners Commissioner Kleinfeld just very quickly um, for uh, breast cancer awareness month uh, 
we're doing an article on um, my experience with it. I'm a, I write a little different and speak a little differently than other people on issues. It, it uh, might be something that uh, you gentlemen aren't used to reading, but it's an interesting article. It, it'll be coming out soon on our Facebook. Keep your eyes open. Thank Very you. Very good. Thanks, Veronica. We're proud of you. Um, new business, <laughs> Chair Smith. Thanks. So, Commissioner, uh, or Commissioner, Senator Lucido approached me and asked if he could come and speak a little more to us about his uh, upcoming proposal about um, the ballot proposal for uh, changing Act 51. So I told him anytime anyone from Lansing wants to come and talk to us at a meeting, I'm fine with it. So we picked the date of Monday, October 28th. Now we have a government oversight meeting at 3 o'clock. I could either do 2.30 with Pete, um, and then if he runs a little long, which I'm sure he won't, um, <laughs> we, could, we could just start government oversight a little later. Or uh, I, I would rather do it that way just so we don't have him sitting around since we don't know it. But does anybody have uh, any issue with coming in at 2.30 on the 28th? That's a week from next Monday. So okay. 2.30 is an excellent idea, not only. We will keep moving these that way if we can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be uh -oh. during an official <laughs> meeting or in the no, conference room? No, I'm going to hold a, uh, a special full board. So, okay, very Mr. good. Mr. Chair, right. if we nod our heads this time, are you going to announce that three of you are in Washington? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you guys have fun. <laughs> uh, uh, second, uh, so last week Patty sent out, Crystal has been pretty much accumulating some questions to, not questions, but information to request from the OCE's office. Um, I'll give these out to you uh, today before we leave what we're going to request, but it has to do with um, the staff uh, comp class and comp study that we never received a copy of. And um, I talked with the OCE's office about some of the other raises that were proposed, and they said that um, um, uh, health or um, HR did their own studies on some of these other raises, so we want we wanted to I ask for those, uh, so that we could see what the logic was behind some of these studies. Since they're not going through union negotiations, I mean we really don't know what's what's going on. Um, Commissioner Brown already asked something that they're working on, but anyway, um, I, Patty will give you the copy of what we're going to ask them, and if anybody else wants any other information prior to. Um, I mean, finalizing their opinion on this budget, uh, that would be great. Also, I would like to ask the committee that got together, the work group from finance, um, that put the resolution together regarding this year or this budget uh, and what we were going to uh, request and, and uh, basically accept in a budget, if they wouldn't mind getting together uh, to look at this budget as compared to what we put together and we all signed and we all voted on that we were going to request from this year's budget and maybe give us a little report on where we feel we stand on this at this point because we have a lot of things to look at monetarily and uh, raise wise and capital projects and general fund balance but we also have some things that we asked for that um, we wrote a resolution and we decided that we were going to stay we want this in our budget propose the budget to us like this I'm not sure that all of those were met and we're going to have to at some point make a decision on what we're going to do about that and i would like to ask if you wouldn't mind joining that group but anyway go ahead it's well i don't know if it's before the election i might have to think about that <laughs> i'm dying <laughs> anyway For, go ahead um i was i was i was asking a couple of commissioners with respect to the the, the raises that were changes in pay um, pay areas, you know, like from 52 to 60 or from 55 to 65, you know, so that some people would continue going up, others were red line. And I know that we vote on TAs, but I don't remember getting a breakdown of all of those. And did we actually vote on those separately, like vote on, because they are technically pay raises, I think. But it's a change in the pay schedule. But I don't, we didn't do that, right? Any of the unions that reached an agreement, there was a pay schedule attached when you guys voted on that. Okay, and, and I know I missed the last, okay. Um, but the non union ones, we did not. And so, like, 
there are people non-union that are redlined that, that we're a little surprised about that and others that aren't correct and there and we don't know the rationale for that particularly within our office there's a a unique position that doesn't exist anywhere else in the county so okay thank you Commissioner Drollet thank you mr. chair quick question this is before my time but the salary and compensation study that the board had I get I assume the board had approved that a couple of years you know it was before both, I was elected. both of them yes the board approved both of them and so the county paid for it the board approved it and how is it that we have not received the study that we paid for well we've asked a matter of fact I know that uh, some of the unions have had to FOIA the county to receive the study from what I understand so we will be asking again to to have I mean it, you're right it does seem like it should be just public uh, knowledge especially yeah, since they've already the gone through the unions and done their negotiations based yeah, on I mean it. it's a public document that was paid for by tax dollars that we should have you know, everybody any citizen should have access to oh, all right thank you um, that and I missed the the last meeting too and crystal I, I want to ask that every chair allow crystal to raise her hand at some point in a meeting when she has information that we might not understand and I know um, our finance director uh, Steve Smeagol was talking about uh, we had asked for more detail why didn't we have more detail and I think the health department or the medical examiners budget and Steve said well we never you know we don't give that kind of detail and you know crystal talked to Steve afterwards and and this is moving forward but at the meeting she was well aware of the fact that last year's budget had all the detail that we were asking for so my point is I would like to make sure and I've told her at my meetings for sure Can I clarify yes we had a long discussion at the table about this she wasn't sure at the table whether she wanted to do it at the table or approach afterwards if we're talking about our discussion anyway I did ask her if she wanted to speak at the last meeting that was the last meeting correct that we had that conversation was the one with Jake. Oh, I can't remember anyway so she was not sure at that time that she wanted to have that conversation whatever we we're talking about publicly so I didn't call on her mm -hmm. but I did mm -hmm. give her the opportunity that, and, and I believe fine. it was the same the same meeting but um, when I'm sitting next to her I, during budget I'm not I just, talking about that meeting I'm sorry no, I'm not, I just like wanted you to know that during budget no. I am now asking crystal are there questions that you want I just want you to know right. that the and that's we're my point I, I think it. that a lot of us don't realize that she probably has a lot uh, I mean a lot of the information that sometimes someone's saying and I'm telling you crystal please raise your hand if you see or hear something that you know to be different or might have you know a question about based on the fact that you're our expert on the budget I mean so we count on you on this yeah, just, so. just a, just a thought and I think that's a great idea but at the same time Crystal, the questions that you ask sprout for us maybe additional information that we would like to have that we're not aware of until you do speak. So I don't put you kind of, how do we say that? We put her on the spot, mm -hmm. but it opens up the door for all of us for additional information that we might we want, we may want that we don't know until she brings up the, the information that she has. So right. I think it's a great idea. Right. I think that's Any it for my business? new business. Okay. Any other new business? See so none need a motion to uh, oh excuse me uh, public participation known from the public motion to adjourn by Leon supported by Kraft please vote to adjourn okay thank you